My daughter hates spiders, like hates them. In fact, there's a spider in her shower right now and she refuses to take a shower. Uh, so I'm gonna have to go deal with that later. But yeah, I'm totally making this video and dedicating it to her because I love her to death, but it's kind of comical how afraid of spiders she is. Like the tiniest spider, like it could be the size of a pencil lead and she's terrified. I know arachnophobia is a real thing and I'm sorry for all of you who suffer from it. And I used to be afraid of them too, but I mean, once you're an adult and a mom and you got little ones running around and you need to squash a spider, you just gotta suck it up and do it. As you can see, I tried karate chopping the caning out of this chair and it didn't work. So I just resorted to ripping it out and trying to tear it out and I quickly realized that this was making a terrible mess. So I took the chair outside and started working on it out there so that way I didn't make a huge gigantic mess on my kitchen floor. I got my X-Acto knife or box cutter, whatever you want to call it, and I started cutting the caning and trying to remove it that way, which seemed to work a little bit better than using all of my strength to rip it out. And a lot of the, I don't even know what that would be called, the little insert piece started pulling out to um, when I was ripping and tearing it out, which is totally fine. Uh, I ended up using some Bondo wood filler to fill in all those gaps. This was a really gross, dirty job. It was nasty. There, You can see all the dust and just gross stuff coming out of this caning from just, I don't even know, sitting there for years, I guess. And it was just really nice. I didn't like doing this. Look at this. Look how gross that was in there. I'm scraping at it with a screwdriver and that's just like years of gone. I mean, how would you even clean this? with the caning on there. They really didn't think about this when they made this chair. So here is the wood bondo that I use. I love this stuff. It's amazing. It's a two part mixture. So you have your bondo and then you have your hardener. You mix it. You only need a little bit of the hardener um, for the bondo to activate it. And you just mix it up really well then you apply it where you need to put it and it dries extremely fast. I mean like 15, 20 minutes, it's good to go. I totally prefer this stuff over like wood filler. Um, it's so much better in my opinion. It is extremely hard and it dries fast. Like I love how fast it dries. The hardest part for me is I have no patience. So waiting for something to dry, it just drives me crazy. So I love that this dries quickly. It's sandable. The only thing is it is not sustainable. So just keep that in mind if you're using it. All right. So now I'm sanding everything down. I'm just using an 80 grit sandpaper and sanding the whole entire chair, smoothing out that bondo, smoothing out those little, um, those things that are pushed in for the caning. I don't know what that's called, you guys. If you know what it's called, please let me know. I have no idea. So smoothing everything out, making it all flat, 
my goal is to make this chair look like foam metal. So I'm not too worried about any small imperfections, but I do want everything flat. I don't want big gaps and you know raised areas. I just want it to be as flat as possible. And I like to sand a prep or paint anyway, so that all works out. I had to make some repairs on this chair. This chair was, I don't know, broken before, like the leg broke off um, and it had been repaired and not very well. So I just went and got some flat brackets and some L brackets and I made it a little bit more sturdy. It wasn't wobbly or anything after I applied these brackets. And like I said, I'm giving this a bow metal look anyways, so I went ahead and I added the straight brackets onto the front. So I'm painting this in Blue Harbor chalk paint by Rust-Oleum, and I don't know why this paint is super watery, but it is, so I had to do two coats of it. I'm just going to take a second and talk about the open collaboration that this video is part of, and the open collaboration is called unique antique challenge and i will put the playlist below so you can watch the other participants videos and it's an open collaboration anybody is welcome to join you just use that hashtag hashtag unique antique challenge and that will link your video up to the playlist this challenge theme was bugs or insects and i dedicated it to the last unique antique challenge, which was a submarine piece that I did, and it was just filled with spiders. So, um, kind of went with a bug theme for this challenge. Now, for the next challenge, um, the person that wins the next challenge gets to pick our next theme. Yay. This video was due on the 30th or soon after or somewhere around there. So I went in with a toasted poppy seed color by Kilts and this is their brand of chalk paint. And I just went in and kind of dry brushed it. I wanted the blue to pull through. So I didn't, I went heavier on some areas and lighter on other areas to kind of give it that faux metal look. And I just want to thank y'all for watching. If you're still watching, I really appreciate it. Next, I'm going in with a metallic copper color paint and I'm just taking a chip brush and I'm just kind of dabbing it here and there. Just kind of give it like a rusty type look, type effect. And I use two different colors of copper color paint. One is slightly darker than the other. Um, and I'm just kind of tapping it where I think maybe metal would rust or, you know, weather or whatever. I'm going to put the link for my Instagram account and my Facebook account down in the description if you guys want to check me out on other social media platforms. So I'm dyeing this fabric or painting this fabric and I started out with this blue and I watered it down a lot. I'm just kind of brushing it on and not really painting the fabric, but more so dyeing it, sort of ish, I guess. Um, I did this with the blue and I didn't love it. So then I did it with like a mustard colored milk paint over top of the blue. Didn't love it again. Then I did a purple um, and that was a Wise Owl chalk paint brand uh, in Amethyst and I still didn't love it. So I ended up doing it again with the blue and I was content with it. I still wasn't happy with it, but it was like, okay, good enough. So for 
the spider web on the chair, I thought I would try my hand at some macrame. And I have learned that I'm not very good at macrame, but I tried it anyways. So I took this macrame cord, and as you can see, I'm trying to figure out where the center is, and I'm using my scissors, which, I don't know, this was kind of hard. I had a hard time with this, um, trying to figure this out. It took a lot of thought. Um, I was watching a video as I was recording this video, and I ended up just tying knots. Like, I... I couldn't figure it out, so I just tied a couple of knots right there in the middle, and that was good enough. <laughs> so same thing with doing the spider web on the back of the chair. I had to think about this a lot, and I had been thinking about it for days, how I wanted to do this. And eventually I just said, okay, well, I'm just going to tie it around the sides of the chair. I wanted to just have the macrame secured onto the inside of the chair. And I had thought of a way to do it, but I just wasn't sure how it was going to look or how it was going to turn out. So I decided not even to bother and waste my time. And I just ended up tying everything on around the outside frame of the chair. I kind of got everything tied on and then I went back through and I tightened it all and made my knots and made sure everything was really tight. Again, this was kind of a real struggle for me. Um, I, I had difficulty with it, but I'm definitely not um, skilled in macrame, <laughs> so I just did my best, and that was that, so yeah. Then when I went to do the, uh, I guess the spider webs connecting them, I just took the pieces that were excess from my knots, from where I tied them, and I just kind of connected them, tied them in knots, and went around the spider web, and, you know, just kind of made it look spider webby, I guess you would say. Y'all are still watching. I just want to say thank you again, and please remember to like this video and subscribe, and if you're really loving it, hit that notification bell so that way when I post videos, you will be notified. I would really appreciate it, you guys. I'm just totally winging it, you guys. You can totally tell I'm just winging it. I mean, I think the final piece turned out awesome. Like, I like the way it turned out, but I mean, I was just totally just kind of flying in the wind when I, when I created this. So for the spider, I went on Google and I found a silhouette of a spider that I liked. And I can't even tell you how many times I erased this with a washcloth so I could paint it <laughs> over and over again. It was a bunch of times. Um... I couldn't get the legs to look spidery and I couldn't get, you know, the body to look spidery or the little, I don't know, mouth thing. So I did this a bunch of times and I had to keep going in and erasing it with my wet washcloth. But finally, I was satisfied with it. And um, yeah, this probably took me the most time other than the macrame to, you know, do this whole chair. And I just used a black acrylic paint and, you know, one of those small artist brushes to do the spider. So I didn't use any special kind of paint, just acrylic paint. And I just, you know, added a couple of applications, especially to the body, because it it's not like a real thick paint. 
So it needed a little bit more um, to kind of make it dark enough to where I liked it. And then that's pretty much it. I um, needed to wait for it to dry, but of course I'm like super impatient. So I went and cut out a blow dryer and dried it that way so I could stage it and take pictures of it and you know, get everything done that I needed to do for that. So let me know what you think, you guys. Tell me down in the comments. Are you into like gothic type furniture? I know this is totally not everybody's cup of tea, but it's definitely different and it's definitely unique and it was fun to create. that this is definitely a taste specific piece and I specifically made it just for this video and this unique antique challenge um, that is dedicated to my last submarine piece so I'm not sure if this will sell I mean I'm gonna try it I posted it I've got a lot of good feedback so far from it so we'll see what happens. I mean, Halloween is right around the corner and maybe somebody will purchase it for that. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Thank you so much for watching the video. Enjoy your day.